Welcome to Atlanta and your 2016 FBA National Leadership Conference. Your national officer team has been working hard to connect with you this year. Let's meet them beginning with your Western Region Vice President from Oregon, Grace Ramstad. Make some noise for your Southern Region Vice President from Alabama, Alexis Crane. Welcome your North Central Region Vice President from Ohio, Nicholas Ferguson. Let's hear for your Mountain Plains Region Vice President from North Dakota, Keaton Erickson. From Pennsylvania, welcome your Eastern Region Vice President, Hirsch Sisodia. Please welcome your national parliamentarian from New Jersey, Vanessa Ting. Let's hear it for your national treasurer from Kansas, Ashton Roddinghouse. Please welcome your national secretary from Indiana, Josie Luptak. And from our host state of Georgia, welcome your national president, Jose Espinel. Members and advisors, this is your 2015-2016 FBLA National Officer Team. Welcome to our 2016 FBLA National Leadership Conference. I'm proud to welcome you to my home state of Georgia. With its endless sophistication, with its endless energy, big city sophistication, and warm southern hospitality, Atlanta is the perfect city to connect with thousands of members at this year's NLC. From its business and industry like Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines to its sports and entertainment like the Hawks, the Braves, the Falcons, and CNN, this city is a great backdrop to our competitions that cover these same careers. Over the next several days, I challenge you to embrace our Connect theme by taking part in all this conference and this city have to offer. As you post your accomplishments and happenings on social media, remember to tag them with hashtag NLC16FBLA. You came here to compete and showcase your talents as your state's top winners. We look forward to celebrating this year's FBLA champions at our Awards of Excellence program. Good luck in your competitions and your campaigns. We are proud to call Atlanta home to our 2016 NLC, and we appreciate the countless hours that our host committee put into making this conference possible. As they join me on stage, please help me thank our host committee members from Georgia FBLA for their hard work in this year's NLC. to present a Certificate of Appreciation to Georgia FBLA Executive Director and State Advisor, Monty Rhodes. From the Georgia Department of Education, we also thank Business Education Program Specialist, Delta Hagen. Let's 
hear it once more for Georgia FBLA, our host of the 2016 National Leadership Conference. Now let's highlight the outstanding members and advisors of the Southern Region. From Alabama, State President Elise Chandler, Who's Who recipient Austin Knight, and outstanding local chapter advisor Amber Brown. From Arkansas, State President Emily Ritchie, Who's Who recipient Tyler Peters, and outstanding local chapter advisor Megan Johnson. From Florida, State President Kyle Johnson, and outstanding local chapter advisor Melissa Baxley. From Georgia, State President and Who's Who recipient Kenny Zoe and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Sherry Smith. From Kentucky, State President Jacob Hansen, Who's Who recipient Jacob Beckley and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Belinda Hodges. From Louisiana, State President Safraz Ahmed, Who's Who recipient Grant Artero and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Sandra Davis. From Mississippi, State President Brianna Ladnier and local, Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Becky Tu. From North Carolina, State President Bryson Burt, Who's Who recipient Chandler Crean and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Kurt Garner. From South Carolina, State President Quadri Bell and Who's Who recipient Anna Kendrick. Anna Hendrick. From Tennessee, State President Kayla Massey and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Becky Brady. From Virginia, State President Nathan Solomonsky, Who's Who recipient Hallie Stapledon and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Melinda Hogan. And from West Virginia, State President Micah Tony, Who's Who recipient Julie Francis and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Laura McLeod. Next, we meet our leaders from the North Central Region. From Illinois, State President Spencer Halsey, Who's Who recipient Corbin Robinson, and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Kelly Wilkerson. From Indiana, State President and Who's Who recipient Mike Bertalan, and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Marana Adams. From Iowa, State President and Who's Who recipient Samir Ansari and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Shannon Smith. From Missouri, State President Thomas Pointer, Who's Who recipient Christina Beard and Outstanding Local Ad Chapter Advisor Lynn Coffey. From Ohio, State President and Who's Who recipient Morgan Shawan and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Frank Back. And from Wisconsin, State President Sydney Bell, Who's Who recipient Cecilia Shortreed, and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Michelle McGlynn. Next are the leaders from the Western Region. From Arizona, State President Seth Filo, Who's Who recipient Courtney Barger, and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Missy Goodman. From California, State President and Who's Who recipient Lydia Zong and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Patrick Frost. From Nevada, State President Alexander Valdez, Who's Who recipient Robert Buono. From Oregon, State President Josie Notter. From Utah, State President Caden Madsen and Who's Who recipient Lauren Maurer. And from Washington, State President Allie Red, Who's Who recipient Zoe Clark, and Outstanding Local Advisor Terry King. We continue the parade of states with the Eastern Region. From China, Representative Po Hu. From the District of Columbia, State President Juan Lobos, Who's Who recipient Shannon Matthews and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Joseph Tallarico. From Haiti, Who's Who recipient... From Haiti, Who's Who recipient Erlon Jean-Baptiste. From Maryland, State President Sophie Sun, Who's Who recipient Nick Santangelo and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Patrick Holt. 
From Massachusetts, State President and Who's Who recipient Nicholas Lazar and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor A.J. Melanson. From New Hampshire, State President Ashley Glenn. From New Jersey, State President and Who's Who recipient Scott Mueller and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Elliot Honig. From New York, State President and Who's Who recipient Daniel Willis. From Pennsylvania, State President Sarah Homan, Who's Who recipient Pranitha Prothori and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Kathy Sickler. From Puerto Rico, President and Who's Who recipient Daniel Salgado Centrone and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Lourdes Borgos. From Rhode Island, State President Matthew Durant and Outstanding Local Advisor Ann Croft. From the U.S. Virgin Islands, President and Who's Who recipient Dante Harris and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Jewel Mills. And from Vermont, State President Grace Miller and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Vicki Trombley. Finishing our parade is the Mountain Plains region. From Colorado, State President Nishtha Kochar, Who's Who recipient Jenny Terrell and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Sue Terrell. From Kansas, State President Kaylee Littrell, Who's Who recipient Sarah Fry, and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Angie Brown. From Nebraska, State President Ojus Jen, Who's Who recipient Nicole Kent, and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Dawn Frederick. From North Dakota, State President Hudson Pierce, and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Paula Trottier. From Oklahoma, State President Jake Williams, Who's Who recipient Cody Briscoe, and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Lacey Haynes. From South Dakota, State Vice President Grace Wolf. From Texas, State President Sabrina Hodgins, Who's Who recipient Prene Thuminayana, and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Emily Robillet. And from Wyoming, State President Daniel DeJohn, Who's Who recipient Lisa Pecoraro, and Outstanding Local Chapter Advisor Carla Ludeman. President Jimmy Carter, a Georgia native, said, We become not a melting pot, but a beautiful mosaic. Different people, different beliefs, different yearnings, different hopes, different dreams. This describes our membership well. As our nation's future leaders, we approach challenges with courage, with imagination, and unbeatable determination. As we honor our nation, please stand for the singing of our national anthem by Zachary Kurtzenberger from Illinois. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the home of the brave. 
please be seated. Keeping our association connected is our board of directors, made up of committed educators, business leaders, and our division presidents. They help guide our association to follow our mission. For all they do for FBLA PBL, we extend a special thank you to our board members joining us tonight. Please turn your attention to the screens for the recognition of our national board of directors. Thank you to board of directors chair Karen Heslop from Arkansas representing the southern region. Serving as chair elect is Lisa Weeks from Alabama also representing the southern region. Serving as a business and industry representative is Piero Palazzolo from Dale Carnegie Training. Also serving as a business and industry representative from KPMG LLP is Stacy Nahas. Serving the Eastern Region is Elizabeth Garofalo from New York. Also serving the Eastern Region is Lee C. Marku from Connecticut. Serving the Mountain Plains Region from Nebraska is Julie Jensen. From Colorado, also serving the Mountain Plains Region is Deb Parman. From Illinois, serving the North Central Region is Kelly Wilkerson. Serving the Western Region is Stacy McGiff from Utah. Also serving the Western Region from Arizona is Shea Padilla. Next are the three division presidents. FBLA National President Jose Espinel from Georgia. Karthik Krishnan, PBL National President from Maryland. And Blake Reynolds, Professional Division National President from Massachusetts. Your ex officio members of the board are Ted Harshbarger, past chair from Nebraska, and Gene Buckley, FBLA PBL President and CEO. Tonight, we recognize two board members who have completed their terms of service on the board. Receiving her recognition plaque is Shea Padilla from Arizona. And from Illinois, we thank Kelly Wilkerson. Thank you for your service to FBLA PBL. Atlanta is the hub for many world headquarters. Each company is unique, yet they share common traits that have defined them as successful companies with strong leadership. We are fortunate to have a strong leader guiding our association. Under her leadership, we continue to thrive. Please welcome our president and CEO, Gene Buckley. Good evening, FBLA. Welcome to the 2016 National Leadership Conference in Atlanta. I am thrilled to announce that once again, you broke our NLC record. This is our largest conference ever with over 12,000 attendees. Congratulations. And you also increased membership this year now reaching 209,000 students. Wonderful job. And leading that increase, adding 2,100 members this year, is our own host state of Georgia. Congratulations, everyone. Each year, I am so proud of the way you connect with your local communities like Northern FBLA in Maryland, whose annual auction raised $18,000 for juvenile diabetes. Mater Academy in Florida, teaching middle school students about resume building and career choices. Coffee County in Tennessee, holding a pink out football, raising $6,000 for breast cancer. And Puerto Rico, raising an amazing $67,000 for the American Cancer Society. Great job, I'm so proud of you. We continue to stay connected with the business community. 
I am delighted to announce that once again, we have every FBLA and PBL competitive event sponsored, raising a record, get this, $272,000. And, and thanks to our business partner, KPMG, and Daniel Willis from Monroe Woodbury FBLA in New York, we were invited to ring the closing bell at NASDAQ. Let's take a look. Was just so cool for us. Thank you, New York. This year, we also had 15 FBLA members named Presidential Scholars. We received a $300,000 grant to promote financial literacy, and five chapters were big winners in the Lead to Feed Challenge, receiving a combined, get this, $35,000 in technology for their schools and $80,000 for their charities. Congratulations. It has been another outstanding year, FBLA. So I want you to plan now to join us next year for our 75th anniversary and to celebrate a legacy of leadership. Good night, everyone, and have a wonderful conference. We ain't ever coming down. so hard not to let it show. What an exciting time to be part of FBLA. We begin our recognition with the top state and local chapters who use their connections to grow their membership. The membership awards are based on the April 1st reporting date. We ask that one representative from the following chapters please come quickly to the stage. Palm Beach Gardens High School in Florida. Divide County High School in North Dakota. Antonio Lucetti High School in Puerto Rico and Southside Baptist Christian in Virginia. We also ask that the following state chapters to send one representative to the stage, Georgia and Texas. As these chapters make their way to the stage, we invite our March of Dimes top fundraising chapters and grant winners to make their way to the holding area at the right of the stage. One representative from the following chapters should report quickly to the holding area. From Alabama, Geneva High School, Hoover High School, Sarah Land High School, Sardis High School, and W.P. Davidson High School. From Arkansas, Nettleton High School. From Maryland, Huntingtown High School. From New Jersey, Wallkill Valley Regional High School. From North Dakota, Divide County High School. From South Carolina, Nation Ford High School. And from Vermont, St. Johnsbury Academy. We also ask one representative from the following state chapters to please come to the holding area at the right of the stage. Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, New Jersey, and Puerto Rico. We ask that all representatives please remain on stage until all membership awards have been presented. We begin with the largest local chapter award. With 492 members, congratulations to Palm Beach Gardens High School in Florida. Next is the market share award. Tying with 100% of the high school as members of FBLA, congratulations to Antonio Lucetti High School in Puerto Rico. We also congratulate Southside Baptist Christian School in Virginia. Winning the award for the largest local chapter professional division with 167 Division, professional division members, congratulations to Divide County High School in North Dakota. Earning the award for the largest state chapter professional division with 410 professional members, congratulations to Georgia. 
stepping forward as the winner of the state recruitment of chapters with 25 new or reactivated chapters. Congratulations to Texas. Let's congratulate the winner of the largest increase in state chapter membership award with 2,060 new members, Georgia. Our next membership award recognizes the largest state chapter. In first place with 21,082 members, we congratulate Georgia. Congratulations on growing our membership with new connections. FBLA PBL is proud of our continued partnership with the March of Dimes. We are excited to honor several chapters for their fundraising efforts. Here to help us recognize our winners is March of Dimes Director of Volunteer Leadership Development, Karen Keller. We ask all of our representatives to remain on stage until all of the awards have been presented. We begin with the top five local chapters raising the most money for the March of Dimes. Stepping forward in fifth place, we congratulate Hoover High School in Alabama. Fourth place, Divide County High School in North Dakota. Third place, Geneva High School in Alabama. Second place, Nettleton High School in Arkansas. And in first place, Wallkill Valley Regional High School in New Jersey. Next, we recognize the top five state chapters raising the most money for the March of Dimes. In fifth place, we congratulate New Jersey. Fourth place, Arkansas. Third place, Georgia. Second place, Puerto Rico. And in first place, we congratulate Alabama. Eight local chapters are receiving grants this evening. The first recipient of a March of Dimes grant is Sarah Land High School in Alabama. Also from Alabama, we congratulate Sardis High School. And to W.P. Davidson High School, also from Alabama. Next, we congratulate Huntingtown High School in Maryland. From New Jersey, congratulations to Wallkill Valley Regional High School. Next, we congratulate Divide County High School in North Dakota. From South Carolina, let's congratulate Nathan Ford High School. And congratulations to St. Johnsbury Academy in Vermont. Thank you to everyone who contributed to the March of Dimes.
Next, we present scholarships to several deserving members along with a, sp a special recognition. We begin with the FBLA Distinguished Business Leader Scholarship. This scholarship recognizes outstanding FBLA members for their activity and involvement in the association. Stepping forward to receive her scholarship, we congratulate Alexis Crane from Alabama. Next, we congratulate Corbin Robinson from Illinois. Congratulations to Ashton Roddinghouse from Kansas. We also congratulate Kayla Massey from Tennessee. And congratulations to Brittany Russell from Wisconsin. One deserving member has earned a full tuition scholarship from Johnson & Wales University. Assisting with the presentation of awards from Johnson & Wales University is Kelly Walters. Stepping forward to receive his full tuition scholarship, we congratulate Chandler Crean from North Carolina. We continue with the National Technical Honor Society Scholarship available to any dues-paying member who is also a member in good standing of the NTHS. Assisting with the presentation is Kate Allen. Stepping forward to receive a $1,000 scholarship, we congratulate Gabriella Dimitrova from Florida. Next, we recognize a Lead to Feed Challenge grand prize winner. This chapter prepared and delivered meals to firefighters three times a day for 30 days as they battled Washington's largest wildfire. Assisting with the presentation is Lead to Feed grant manager, Debbie Dodge. Stepping forward to receive a certificate for winning a $25,000 grant for their charity and $10,000 in technology products for their school, we congratulate Odessa High School in Washington. Congratulations to all these recipients. We continue our recognition with the Business Persons of the Year Award presented to several business leaders involved in FBLA. Stepping forward is Dr. Jason Ritchie, a family practice doctor at Cooper Clinic, PA, nominated by Arkansas. Next, we recognize Jahi Davis, president of Davis and Davis Credit Advisors, LLC, nominated by the District of Columbia. Congratulations to Derek Walls, senior account executive for Ogilvy Public Relations, nominated by Georgia FBLA. We congratulate Zach Groff, owner of Pixel Point LLC, nominated by Maryland. Next, we recognize Sherry Camp, first vice president of Morgan Stanley, nominated by Nebraska. Congratulations to Shannon McConnell, senior financial services representative at First Citizens Bank, nominated by North Carolina. We recognize Dr. Ismael Suarez with Puerto Rico Interamericana University, nominated by Puerto Rico. Congratulations to Joshua Gross, sales manager at Embassy Suites, nominated by West Virginia. And let's congratulate Mark Witt, senior vice president at Portage National Bank, nominated by Wisconsin. Representing Mark Witt is Holden Pratt. Thank you to our Business Persons of the Year. Before we continue, we ask all candidates for national office including those for national parliamentarian and regional vice presidents to please report backstage. Your national officers look forward to connecting with you throughout the conference. 
If you would like to see your advisor or chapter members recognized on screen before the Awards of Excellence program, remember to tag all of your conference photos with hashtag NLC16FBLA and look for your photos on screen before the session. Be sure to visit the, campaign, the exhibits and campaign booths in the atrium ballroom of the Marriott, where you can learn more about our national officer candidates and gain valuable information from their vendors and exhibitors. Take time to visit the marketplace in A601 through A602 of the Marriott to get your customized FBLA apparel and your National Leadership Conference t-shirt. Hours are from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. tomorrow and Friday. Be sure to visit the silent auction tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the Atrium Ballroom Foyer, also at the Marriott. The proceeds will go towards sponsorships of our competitive events. Make sure to attend your regional campaign rally and recognition session tomorrow evening. This will be the only scheduled meeting for your region, which will include state success stories, regional vice president campaign speeches, and Q&A, and all regional award recognition. On Friday, we encourage you to join us from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. for the March for Babies. Please meet us in the Atrium Ballroom Foyer as we show our support for the March of Dimes. Remember to bring your $5 donations and your walking shoes. As a co-founder and now retired chairman and CEO of Yum! Brands, some of my favorites, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and KFC. Tonight's keynote speaker helped establish them as a global industry leader with over 40,000 restaurants and 1.5 million associates in 120 countries. Along with many recognitions, including 2012 CEO of the Year, our speaker also earned the Horatio Alger Award for commitment to philanthropy and higher education. He's a lifelong member of the Horatio Alger Association of Distinguished Americans. His leadership book, Taking People With You, The Only Way to Make Big Things Happen, inspired the 2012 launch of Lead to Feed Student Leadership Program, a free leadership community service program for secondary students. He is now launching a new company, OGO Enterprises, the world's first recognition brand focused on appreciating all people for who they are and what they do, and last month released his new book, Oh Great One. Please welcome David Novak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be talking to the future business leaders of America. Give yourself a big hand. All right. I know you're all leaders, and one of the things that leaders do, whether you know it or not, is you cast a shadow of leadership. If you're leading a team, people are watching you, they're seeing what you do, and they basically do what the leader does. So you cast a shadow of leadership. And one of the things that I always try to do is I try to cast a shadow of positive energy. So everywhere I speak, and I have to tell you, I am very nervous tonight. I have never spoken to 12,000 people in my life, so you got to help me out here. But wherever I speak, I always try, and whatever meeting I have, I try to create positive energy. So I always start out my meetings by doing a yum cheer. And I want you to help me out, and I want to do the loudest yum cheer in the history of the world. Now stand up, I want to teach you this cheer. Now you probably never danced to YMCA, but pretend like you did. The way how you do this is I go, give me a Y, give me a U, give me an M. What's that spell? Yum. What's that spell? Yum. What's that spell? Yum. Are you ready? Loudest ever. Give me a Y. Y. Give me a U. U. Give me an M. Yeah. What's that spell? Yeah. What's that spell? Yeah. What's that spell? Yeah. All right. Way to go. All right. I always find that when you do a cheer like that, it always lifts people up, creates that positive energy. Now I know 
that all of you are leaders in this room and you all have big goals. And when you think about your big objectives, how many of you can get them done totally by yourself? Raise your hand. I see a few people raising their hand. They must be really good at what they do. But most people know that there's no way you can make really big things happen by yourself. There's no way you can really make big things happen without connecting with others. I've written a book on this very subject, and it's based on a leadership program I taught in our company over the past 15 years. It's everything I've learned about how to connect with people and how to make big things happen. Tonight, I want to share my top three learnings that will help you connect and make you a better leader as you go about building your career in business. Let's start with learning number one. The best leaders I know go to work every day focused on being your best self so that they can connect with others and take people with them. And here, self-awareness is key. You need to really understand yourself. And the best way to know yourself is to ask others how you come off, how you're perceived, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. And this means being open and being vulnerable, but putting yourself out there and really looking for feedback. One of the things that I do every year is I always talk to people and I ask them, what do they think about me? How can I get better? And then I do in January, I sit down and I do what I call a three by five exercise. I write down on the left side of the three by five card what I appreciate about what I've done as a leader so far. And then I write, how can I be even more effective? How can I become even better? Like, for example, one of the things that's a strength of mine is that I'm very, very passionate and I have lots of energy about what I do. On the downside, that can be very intimidating to people because when I go into a room, I can overwhelm people. And when you do that, you don't get the best of everybody's thinking. So what I do with my team is I always say, hey, listen, I'm passionate, but I know I can be intimidating, I can overwhelm people, help save me from myself. Let's work together and let's get the best solution and be sure to push back on me. I want to share with you a story about how being self-aware really helped me progress in my career. I was the head of marketing for Pepsi-Cola Company, and every quarter I would have lunch with the chairman and CEO of PepsiCo. I would sit down with him, and I would always talk to him about the business, and, and, and one time he asked me, he said, you know, David, what do you want to do in your career? And I said, well, Mr. Calloway, I, I, would, I would love to be a president of a PepsiCo division. And he said, David, you're a really good marketing guy. And I said, well, I really want to be a president of one of our companies, one of our brands. And he said, David, you're a really good marketing guy. And I said, well, I really, really want to be a president. And he said, David, you're a really good marketing guy. I'll make you president of marketing. We need more marketing people. And I said, I really want to run a company. Well, I walked away from that meeting knowing that I was going to have to demonstrate to Wayne Calloway that I was more than a marketing guy and that I had an understanding for business and that I could roll up my sleeves and understand how to make money and, and, and get into the details of the business. And so, sure enough, about a month later, the chief operating officer job came open at the, at the Pepsi-Cola company, and I went to my coach, and I said, hey, listen, Craig, I'd really like to have the opportunity to run operations because I want to demonstrate that I'm more than a marketing guy. And he gave me that opportunity to go run operations. And because I had that opportunity to run operations and prove that I was more than a marketing guy, I ultimately got promoted and was able to run one of PepsiCo's brands. So being self-aware really helped me progress. Understanding where you stand and how you can need to, what the things you need to do to make yourself better is really important as you grow in business. Now let's move to learning number two. I came up 
in marketing, doing advertising for Frito-Lay and chief marketing jobs at Pizza Hut and the Pepsi-Cola Company. So I'm, I'm basically a marketer at heart. That's what I really love. It's my true passion in business. But it really laid the foundation for the second learning that I want to share with you. And that's to use and develop marketing skills to build teams, connect with others, and get results. Now let me explain. In marketing, I always ask my teams, I always ask this question that we need to understand about our customers. What perceptions, habits, and beliefs do we need to change, build, or reinforce to grow our business? I've always found that when you can answer that question, you can find a winning solution. Now, one of the things that I learned about customers is customers are not really good, and consumers are not really good at telling you what they want, but they're very good at complaining. So the best research we ever did was what we call problem detection studies. We would get all our customers in a room and do research with them. We'd ask them to complain about everything in our category, everything about our brands. And we'd list all the problems that they had. And then we would try to quantify what are the biggest problems they had that occurred most frequently. And whenever you can solve that big problem that occurs most frequently, you're on your way to business success. Well, at Taco Bell, we did a problem detection study. And we found out that the single biggest problem we had was that our products were messy to eat and were hard to eat on the go. Now, that's a big problem when 70% of what you sell goes out through the drive through window. Now, we had introduced some products that hadn't done very well at all. We'd introduced a quesadilla. We launched it and said, hey, Taco Bell has a great new quesadilla. Come try this new quesadilla. And we found that we got zero sales growth. But once we learned that the biggest problem consumers had was us, the fact that we weren't easy to eat on the go and we weren't portable, we went back and we hired Jeff Bezos at Amazon. We went to his headquarters and shot this commercial with six people sitting around a table and they were talking about the hottest new handheld on the market. And guess what that hot new handheld was? It was Taco Bell's quesadilla. Now, all of a sudden, because we've solved that problem of being portable, our sales growth is 9%. Now, how many of you have ever had a crunch wrap? All right, you love that crunch wrap. Well, we developed that product after we knew we needed to have a portable product that was easy to eat on the go and we positioned it and advertised it as good to go. But once we had that insight, we were able to come up with a whole new advertising campaign, think outside the bun, launch portable products, and grow our business. Now, so learning number two is when you think about leadership and taking people with you, you need to think about the people that you got to take with you and that you need to connect with just like a marketer does about their target audience or a salesman or salesperson does about the customer. You need to get inside of the heads of the people you need to lead and make sure that you're relevant. You need to know what perceptions they have of you and the project that you're working on, what beliefs they have, what habits they may have, and then make sure that you become very relevant to them and get them on your side and get them wanting to work on your project. So always think about what perceptions, habits, and beliefs that the people you need to lead have and then develop a very relevant program to go after it. Now this sounds like common sense, but the problem with common sense is it's just not that common. Now this brings me to learning number three. And this is the biggest learning of all. If you really want to connect with others, create a team environment where everyone counts and everyone knows that they're needed. Now let me give you the secret weapon for making this happen. And let me start with the seminal moment of my career. As I mentioned earlier, I had the opportunity to be the chief operating officer for the Pepsi-Cola company. 
And like I said earlier, I was a marketing person. I really didn't know a lot about operations, but I needed to learn a lot in a hurry when I got that job. So the way I did it is I went out in the field. I left on Monday morning, and I came back on Saturdays, and I went out, and I went to our Pepsi-Cola bottling plants, and I met with the frontline team members and, and asked them what was working, what wasn't, and asked what I could do as a leader to help them succeed. One time, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm meeting with, I knew I'd get some a little stir out there, but I was meeting with 10 route salesmen, and these are the people that drive the Pepsi-Cola trucks, and I was asking them about merchandising, who was good at merchandising, what they'd learned, what they were seeing in the marketplace, and everybody started raving about Bob, who was sitting down at the end of the table. And they said, let me tell you something. You want to know about merchandising? Talk to Bob. He taught me more in a half day than I learned my first four years. And everybody started raving about this guy named Bob. And I looked down at the end of the table, and he's crying. And I said, Bob, why are you crying? These people are heaping all this praise on you. And he said, you know, I've been in this company for 47 years. I'm retiring in two weeks, and I didn't know that people felt this way about me. And I said to myself that if I ever had a chance to lead a company or from that day forward, I would find a way to make recognition the biggest value that I could drive in whatever company I worked in. Well, after doing this operating job at Pepsi, I got the opportunity to be, become the, the president of KFC. And when I got this job, I actually got from my friends, I got more calls for condolences than congratulations. Because at the time, KFC had had seven straight years of no sales growth and hadn't done well since PepsiCo had acquired it. So it was a really tough job and the business was in the dumps. So I started out by putting myself in the heads of the people I was going to lead. I learned what they were thinking what perceptions and beliefs that they had. And, and I found out that the guy who had my job before was seen as very formal, wasn't a per people person, never got out of his office, and was basically sort of a stiff. So I definitely wanted to show people that I was different. I also learned that nobody was having any fun, and business should be fun. I also learned that people weren't getting recognized for what they were doing and that the environment was dead, and that the people inside the company weren't happy with our franchisees, and our franchisees weren't happy with the people working in the company, and there was a lot of finger pointing, and people weren't working together. People weren't connecting. So I decided this was the perfect opportunity to drive the power of recognition and get people working together. And thinking like a marketer, I needed, knew I needed a breakthrough solution to get this started. I knew I needed the big idea. And I heard about this guy in IT who had a monthly meeting with his, with his team, and he, he had this special award that he gave out. And so in true presidential fashion, I went to him and asked him if I could steal his idea. And he said, yes, David, you can have it. So let me show you how I started recognizing people at KFC. I gave away this rubber chicken. I would, I would number each one of these rubber chickens. I would write on it. I'd go into a KFC. I'd find a cook that was doing a great job, and I'd say, you know, Ralph, you're doing a fantastic job with the original recipe. Quality is what makes our business go. Thank you for all you do. Then I told him, I'm going to take a picture with you and me, and I'm going to send you a picture of this so you can put in your office. But more importantly, I'm going to put your picture in my office because you're making things happen. And, and besides, besides this, I'm going to give you $100 because I know you can't eat a rubber chicken. Well, guess what? I started doing this all over the company, going out, finding people who were doing great things. And now people were crying for a different reason. They were happy. They were joyous that they were getting this recognition. And guess what we did at KFC? Because we started working together. We started connecting. We turned the business around, and we grew sales and profits. We doubled it in four years. I, I said, yeah, we developed new products. We did a lot of good things. But what made it happen, it was a triumph of human spirit, people working together. 
And because of this, I got promoted. I got promoted to go run Pizza Hut as well. So I needed another idea. So this is what I did. I gave away these cheese heads. And I did the same thing. I wrote on them. I said, hey, thank you for doing this. You developed this new product. It's great. Appreciate all you do. Numbered it. Took the picture. Sent them the picture. Put their picture in my office. Gave them $100 because you couldn't eat one of these. And then I got lucky enough to get promoted again. So now I'm the chief executive officer of Yum! Brands. So I need a recognition award. So I give away these. This is my Walk the Talk Award. This is catching people walking the talk on behalf of our customers. Now, when I started doing this recognition, we were a global company. We were, at that point in time, we were in about 90 countries. And people said this wouldn't work everywhere. You can't do recognition like this everywhere. Not everybody will like it. Well, I gave one of these awards to a restaurant general manager in, in Shanghai named Ming Ling. And we had a person go visit her restaurant and said, I understand David Novak gave you one of his Yum! Awards. And she said, yes, he did. And she said, can I see it? And she said, no. And she goes, what do you mean, no? And she says, it's at home, locked up in my father's safe. Believe me, this award meant a lot to her because it said, hey, listen, I care about what you're doing and what you do matters. Now, if you walked into my office today you would see that I have recognized 1,041 people with Yum! Awards. And my walls are, are lined from floor to ceiling of people, of pictures that I have recognized. People love to go into the CEO's office. They want to know what your business stands for. For us, it's people. You have the right people, you make more customers happy, and you make more money. And then People said, well, what happens when you run out of wall space? I said, I'm going to put the pictures on the ceiling. So when you walk into my office, you look up, and you'll see pictures of people on the ceiling. This is the greatest office in the corporate world, I promise you. But what's powerful is not my office and not the fact that I'm doing recognition, but remember what I talked about earlier. Remember that shadow of leadership. What's powerful is all of our leaders around the world now have their own individual recognition awards. And just let me show you a few of them. The president of Taco Bell gives away a sauce packet, and he writes down what each person has done to earn one. We have somebody who runs 50 restaurants in Florida who gives away this You Can Award for people who have a positive attitude and make things happen. This is one of my my favorites. In Asia... People love to gamble. So the the head of our our Thailand business gave away a deck of cards. The only problem was is that he was the king on the deck of cards. And uh, I can tell you, he no longer works at our company. He works at McDonald's and making people miserable there. But, But the fact of the matter is, is we showed him that having a heart really does matter. And we showed everybody that recognition really, really does matter. And one thing I want you to know as you move up in your careers, you need to remember the higher up you go, you need to celebrate the achievements of others, not just hog the glory for yourself. You know, I worked for this guy once where I would come in on Monday morning, I'd have an idea, and I'd say, you know, I think we need to do this. And he says, you know what? I was thinking the same thing when I was driving into work today. I go in the next day, and I say, you know, I think we need to do this. And he goes, you know what? I had the same thought when I was shaving today. And I come in and say, hey, let's, you know, let's go do this. I think it's a good idea. And he says, you know, I was thinking the same thing when I was showering. This guy was a genius. He knew what we were thinking before we even thought it. What he really was, though, was insecure, not secure enough to share the credit. He was squashing people's ingenuity. He was wanting wanting to take all the credit. You don't want to do that as a leader. You want to give that credit away. You know, one of the greatest coaches of all time knew the power of recognition, recognition. I had the opportunity to interview the great and late John Wooden, the famous basketball coach for UCLA. He won 10 national championships at UCLA. And one rule that he had was, 
recognize if someone, if you score a ba basket, make sure you recognize someone by acknowledging, you know, point to them, but make sure you give them some recognition that they helped you score that basket, whether they threw you the pass or you set the screen. One of the players said to them, well, coach, what if they're not looking? And John Wooden said, oh, they'll be looking because he knew that people are looking for recognition. He also recognized bad behavior when he saw it, and he told me his most powerful weapon was the bench. If you didn't perform well, you didn't play. He talked to me about this one player that he had. He came to him, he said, you know, coach, I'm the best player on the team and you're not playing me. And he said, you know, right? You're, you're, you're right, I'm not playing you because I, I track the statistics. When you're out on the floor, our team isn't as good because you don't pass the ball. You don't help the team get better. And he smiled at me and said, you know, next year that person, Sidney Wicks, was the best college basketball player in our country. But John Wooden, as a coach, knew how to make his players better because he cared enough to make them better and help them be self-aware on how they could get better. And remember, people won't care about you unless you care about them. You know, I had the opportunity to meet with Colin Powell, and he told me about one of his very first jobs that he had, and he actually worked, before he was Secretary of State, he actually worked in a Pepsi-Cola bottling plant. And I asked him what his job was, and he said, I mopped up the syrup on the floor every night. And he said, you know what? When I did that for a whole summer, and then at the end of the summer, the foreman came up to me and said, son, I've been watching you all summer, and I want to tell you something. You did a great job mopping up those floors. And Colin Powell told me, he said, that's when I knew the power of recognition really mattered, because it says someone's watching. When you recognize someone for what they do, it says you're watching and what they do really matters. Believe me, recognition is your secret weapon to connecting with others. Even if it's as simple as just saying thank you for how people are mentoring you, helping you, helping you grow in your career. I'm so passionate about recognition that I'm starting a new company and a new brand. You know, I'm not retiring from Young Brands, I'm refiring. And what I'm doing is I'm creating the first recognition brand for the amazing people in your life. Let me tell you how I came up with the brand name. When I became a grandfather, I didn't know what to call myself. And I, I love my late father-in-law's name that he called himself. He called himself Great Jack. So I said, you know what, I'll call myself Great David. Well, Great David doesn't have a magical ring like Jack. Jack is a magical name, whimsical name. David's a little, little boring. And then it just came to me. I said, you know what? I'm going to call myself Ogo. And people said, what do you mean? Well, what's Ogo? And I said, it stands for O Great One. And when I did that, and I told people that, everybody smiled. And I've come in, coming up in marketing, I know that when you can have a name that generates a smile, you might have a great idea. And so I'm going to create this company called Ogo, which will recognize the great ones in your life. And then I decided to write a book to launch this company. It's called O Great One, a little story based on the awesome power of recognition. It's a fictional story, a parable. It's about this guy who has the opportunity to run Happy Face Toy Company. But he goes to Happy Face Toy Company, realizes that the results are terrible, no, and the reason why is no one's happy and no one's enjoying their work and no one feels appreciated for what they do. And this book is based on the experiences I had as I took recognition like this and spread it all around the world and built a really fantastic company. And I really believe you should read this book because there's so much power inside of it. And it's not because I have any profit motive. All the profits to, for this book, just like taking people with you, goes to charity. In this case, type 1 diabetes, which my wife has had since she was seven years old. But the goal of this brand and the goal of the book is to attack what I've coined the global recognition deficit. 
People are starved for recognition all around the world. And I fielded national research just to quantify this fact. And believe it or not, I've learned these things. 82% of employees feel that their supervisor doesn't recognize them for what they do. 60% say they're, they're motivated more by recognition than money. 56% say they, they want more recognition from their supervisor. 43% wants more recognition from their colleagues. 40% say that recognition at works would, gives them more energy to put in their job. But sadly, recognition happens at work only about once every two months, if you're lucky. Now, you might ask why. Number one, bosses are afraid that if you recognize somebody, people won't work as hard. That's crazy. I just, we have research that says that 60% say that they value recognition as much as money, and 40% of people say they put more energy into their work. The other thing that they say is that they're afraid they'll upset other people by recognizing one person and not somebody else. But that's not the case. Once people see people getting recognized, they want it too, and it feeds on itself. There's no question in my mind that recognition is the soft stuff that drives hard results. There are two reasons why Great people leave companies, and, and when you ever leave a company someday, these will be the reasons. Number one, you won't feel appreciated for what you do, and number two, you won't get along with your boss. That's why we strongly believe in recognition, and we strongly believe that you really need to build coaches and not bosses. Now, the lack of recognition is a problem in all industries. You know about Six months ago, I had a full head of hair. It, but now I learned that I have cancer. And I'm in the midst of battling cancer right now, and the prognosis is good. But I had the opportunity to go meet with the oncologist, a renowned oncologist who can help you figure out what kind of treatment you need to have in New York. And she was a very special person. And I asked her, I said, how long have you been doing this? And she said, you know, I've been doing this for 40 years. She wanted to see the recognition I got. And she said, I got a form letter and I got this plastic keychain. And she just laughed at it. She snickered at it like, can you believe this is what I got? Now, this is a person who's saving thousands of people's lives over a 40-year period and she gets a little plastic keychain in a form letter. Believe me, recognition is needed in every industry. Now, the great thing about cancer is you're not, you don't get hit by a bus if you have cancer. You get to tell people you love them. You get to take the time to let them know how special they are to you. And people get to tell you what they appreciate about you. So this burden that I have with cancer has, has become sort of a blessing in sort of a strange kind of way. But just think if you got hit by a bus tomorrow, who have you not recognized? Who, who's out there that you need to say thank you to? You need to start to recognize people now. Do it early, do it in business, and I guarantee you that you are going to be successful, and it will help you connect in everything that you do. I want to close by sharing two really quick stories. When I was running marketing for Pepsi, one of our celebrities that we had was Magic Johnson. And he became HIV positive, and he announced that he was HIV positive. And at that point in time, that was a big deal, made national news, and all of his sponsors, most of his sponsors immediately dropped him. So his agent called me up and he said, you know, David, we'd like to get together and see what Pepsi's going to do. Well, I met with my coach, and we talked about it. And we wanted to keep Magic Johnson. In fact, we developed very quickly a promotion for the summer, which was We Believe in Magic. But I went to the Plaza Hotel in New York, and, and Magic Johnson walked into the, for this room that we had, this dinner we were going to have. I've never seen anybody more charismatic in my life. This guy was an unbelievable specimen. His smile lit up the place. We very quickly told him that we wanted to maintain our relationship and actually make it stronger. And then we just had a nice dinner. But I asked him, I said, what was it like when you were growing up as a kid 
you had to be so much better than everybody else in basketball. He says, well, let me tell you something, David. When I played basketball, you know, and as a kid in youth leagues, we'd, we'd win a game 80 to 20, and I'd score 65 points. And when the game was over, all the players and all the parents, nobody was happy. They were disappointed in me. And I realized that I needed to learn how to pass the ball and share the ball. So I started passing to people. And now we win 60 to 30. I score 15 points. Everybody else scores 5 to 10. And at the end of the game, everybody's happy. But I then realized the key was getting everybody involved. Then I went to the NBA and I said, I'm going to be the greatest passer of all time and set the assist record. And he did. And he, he made everybody better. He told Lou Alcindor, who became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I'm going to make you the leading scorer in the NBA. And when he threw him that pass and he scored that basket, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar comes and picks him up and says, you told me you'd do it. And he did it. Now, Magic Johnson won play, one playoff series in the championship series. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar hurt himself, so Magic Johnson had to, had to play center. And he scored 47 points. This is a guy who could score as many points as he wants almost every night, but he learned how to pass the ball, and his team became better. And that's the power of going from me to we. And that's what leadership is all about, connecting. The other thing I want to tell you is that I traveled around the world. The one place I went was Indonesia. And I'm sitting out by the pool on a Sunday morning, and I'm reading the newspaper. And I was watching this lady get into the pool. Have you ever seen somebody get into the pool where the water's a little chilly and they put their foot in and they work their way down and they're just barely, you know, they keep getting there and you just, you know, they're trying to get in, they get lower and lower, but they just barely get in there. Well, she's really just doing it very gingerly. And then I see this little kid come coming out from nowhere and jumps in this pool and like tremendous cannonball hits her in the face sprays her with water, hits the newspapers, and creates all these ripples. And when you think about what you're going to do in your life, do you want to go out there and tip your toe in that water? Do you want to tip your toe and work your way into it? Or do you want to jump in that pool and make some ripples and make the most of your life and make a difference in this world? You are here as the future business leader of America because you're a leader. Go be a leader, make it happen, and connect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, David, for your words of wisdom. It is now time for us to begin the campaign rally and introduce the candidates running for next year's national officer team. Let's begin by meeting your candidates for national parliamentarian and region vice president. Your candidates for national parliamentarian are Isabel Alvarado from New York. Cyril Anthony from Virginia. Sydney Bell from Wisconsin. Myra Cheng from California. Tyler Hess from Virginia. Gabrielle Holloway from Louisiana. Natalie Labaugh from Louisiana. Amy Pence from Kentucky. Omkar Weingunker from Georgia. Robin Wilson from Kentucky. And Jonathan Zhao from, from Maryland. Best of luck to our national parliamentarian candidates. Next are your candidates for Region Vice President. 
We begin with your candidate for Western Region Vice President from Utah, Jeff Whiting. Your Southern Region candidate is from Arkansas, Emily Ritchie. Meet your candidate for North Central Region Vice President from Wisconsin, Hattie Kruchak. Your candidate for the Office of Mountain Plains Region Vice President. From Nebraska, Ojas Jan. And from Texas, Alexis Ochoa. Next are your candidates for Eastern Region Vice President. From New York, Sophia Danziger. From Pennsylvania, Ram Palinati. And from Connecticut, Daniel Peluso. Good luck to these candidates. And now back to your national president from some important campaign information. Best of luck to our candidates for region vice president and national parliamentarian. In tomorrow's regional campaign rallies and recognition sessions, you will hear the speeches for the office of region vice president. Be sure to check the conference app for the time and location of your regional session. And now, the speeches for the offices of President, Secretary, and Treasurer. Each candidate will speak from this lectern or use the handheld microphone. So that everyone in the room can hear, we ask that you speak directly into the microphone. Each candidate will have two minutes for his or her speech. Alexis Crane, your Southern Region Vice President, will be seated in the front row and stand when 15 seconds are remaining. When your time is up, she will stand and call time. Then you must finish. The campaign speeches will be given in the order of Treasurer, Secretary, and President. For each office, the candidates will be introduced alphabetically by last name. We begin with the Office of Treasurer. There are two candidates for this office. The National Treasurer is responsible for maintaining accurate records of national officer travel as well as promoting the goals of the association. Our first candidate for National Treasurer is Austin Green from Oregon. I love numbers. Ever since a young age, I have been obsessed with numbers. I was that kid that, while everyone else was busy complaining about math, I found solace in it. Around the age of eight, I came home from school one day. I walked straight up to my mom and I told her with a seriousness that no eight-year-old before I had mustered that I wanted to be an accountant. Looking back now, I realize I made that judgment simply because it was the only job I could think of that dealt with numbers. I know there's a few of you on the audience that share this crazy passion with me, but recently, I found something that competes with my love for numbers, FBLA. I first discovered FBLA when my sister joined her junior year. At first, I was a little hesitant, but then I realized that there was something that I could not resist. There were numbers. I mean, what more could I possibly ask for? And so, without a moment's hesitation, I was hooked. And from that moment on, my life was changed. Hello everyone, my name is Austin Green, and since that fateful day, I have wanted to be more. FBLA has given me and so many others countless opportunities that I never even knew existed. Before FBLA, if you had told me that I would stand on a stage in front of thousands of people and deliver this very speech, I would have laughed and called you crazy. But here I stand today. My main goal in running is to help give back to an organization that has already given me and so many others countless opportunities. That is my main goal and is what drives me every day to do and be my absolute best. Obviously, I have much more to offer you than just that, which is why I invite you to come by my booth so I can share my dreams with you. We all have passions in life and minor numbers in FBLA, which is why I believe I'd make an excellent treasure for this wonderful organization. So remember, 
Just show me the money and leave your green to me. And elect Austin Green as your next national treasurer. Thank you. Thank you, Austin. Our final candidate for national treasurer is Nicholas Lazar from Massachusetts. Good evening, FBLA. My name is Nicholas Lazar, and I'm seeking your vote to be your next national treasurer. Just two years ago, I found myself among 12,000 of my high school peers at my first NLC in Nashville. Of those 12,000 students, five, just five, came from my home state of Massachusetts. It was that moment when I first realized the true scope of FBLA. Never could I have imagined the opportunities that I'd be blessed with. Since then, I've placed twice at Nationals, served as a three-term state officer and the head of sponsorship on the National Treasurer's Council. I presented a case study to figures in the European Union and worked with incredible members from across the nation. These opportunities to lead, to compete, and to connect are what make FBLA special. I promise that if I'm elected as your next National Treasurer, I'll work to expand these opportunities so that we can set our goals and reach higher than ever before. I'll work closely with the business community, as I have in Massachusetts, to give members greater access to job shadowing, scholarships, and internships. I'll create a webinar series so that you can learn more about the industries in which our sponsors specialize, from banking to hospitality to entrepreneurship. Similarly, I'll work to ensure that each member has the resources they need to succeed in tomorrow's business environment. A mere 34% of high school students know how to pay a bill, and only 14% know what a 401k is. As future business leaders of America, we can lead a financial literacy revolution. I have a plan to create a series of student resources and to work closely with your chapters to provide tools for financial success. FBLA members and advisors, thank you for your time tonight. I know that together, we can raise the bar with Lazar. candidates for the Office of National Secretary. The responsibility of this office is to keep accurate minutes of all National Executive Council meetings. We will first hear from Divya Kapoor from Maryland. Being an FBLA member is an adventure. FBLA takes us all on our own voyages to success. However, without genuine leaders, our organization will find itself lost. A capable leader will act as a lighthouse, inspiring us to explore a treasure trove of opportunities. Because I, Divya Kapoor, want to be a source of light and direction for you, I would be honored if you would elect me as your 2016-2017 National Secretary and explore with Kapoor. Since my freshman year, FBLA has been the compass that guides me in the direction of my dreams, the lighthouse that illuminates the way to success, and the ship that carries my confidence to shore. Now, as an incoming senior, I want to give back. I will help our members explore the opportunities FBLA has to offer in three ways. One, our members need sturdy ships to keep them afloat, so I will focus on initiatives that strengthen local chapters regardless of their size, resources, or reputation. Two, FBLA must provide us with valuable, relevant skills. As such, I will expand and revamp the Business Achievement Awards. And three, I will provide a compass to direct our organization forwards, consolidating recruitment tips, competitive event information, and using Twitter polls to help direct national FBLA's goals and decisions that affect you. FBLA members, before we set sail on our own voyages, we need a beacon of inspiration that will light our path to shore. Visit my booth and use the hashtag ExploreWithKapoor on Twitter and Instagram to see how I will guide us on this journey. 
every expedition needs a strong leader. So elect me as your national secretary and explore with Kapoor. Thank you. Our next candidate is for national secretary is Tyler Thomas from Ohio. Good evening, FBLA. I am Tyler Thomas, and I'm excited to tell you why you should tie a legacy with Ty for National Secretary. Currently, I am the Central Region Vice President for the Ohio Future Business Leaders of America, and previously was State Secretary, in addition to being on the FBLA National Secretary's Council. To me, leaving a legacy or leadership behind is showing others how to do the job effectively and efficiently. As State Secretary, I made sure that my minutes and agendas were clearly and concisely written. I also made sure to multitask at meetings by taking great notes and contributing to the topic at hand. Being on state and national councils has been a life-altering commitment for me. It has improved me as a leader. It's guided me over my fear of stage fright. As you see, I'm talking to you, more than 10,000 people here at this conference. It's also improved me as a person. By teaching me, what I put into a program is what I get out of it. As National Secretary, one of my missions would be to promote a program called Super Secretaries. Super Secretaries are those who embody the meaning of being a secretary and also educate those who are upcoming secretaries how to do their job effectively and efficiently. As National Secretary, I will post Super Secretaries of the Week nominated by you FBLA members, and I will also post Super Secretary tips to teach those upcoming secretaries how to do their job effectively and efficiently. In conclusion, I believe my prior experience and growth uniquely qualifies me for the position as your next National Secretary. So please, vote for me and tie a legacy with Ty. Also, tie a connection with Ty by following me on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter at vote for Ty. Vote number four, Ty. Thank you, and tie a legacy with Ty. Your final candidate is Vanessa Ting from New Jersey. Hello, FBLA. My name is Vanessa Ting, and nothing describes my story better than what I'm doing now compared to what I was doing three years ago in June. Running for chapter publicist, looking at my shoes and shaking, too nervous to even look at the 30 members in the cafeteria. Three years ago, I was an incredibly awkward freshman, but FBLA gave me the opportunity to develop leadership skills, and I plan to give those same opportunities to you. Whether it's through contacting business sponsors to secure virtual internships, or highlighting accomplished members through the hashtag Member Monday on national social media pages. But above all, I plan to give every member a voice, starting right here in Atlanta. Come visit my booth to write down what you want to see change in FBLA. I stand here today not just because I'm an FBLA national officer, and I've had experience leading initiatives to bridge a gap between member and officer. I'm not speaking before you all just because I'm the current New Jersey State Secretary, and I've taught members across the nation how to use minutes and agendas. Because for national secretary, a qualified candidate isn't just someone who would be good at their job. It's someone who is passionate, understands her membership, and truly loves FBLA. And as someone who attributes FBLA to meeting some great friends and developing confidence, I truly love FBLA. I stand here today with a promise, a promise to strengthen, unite, and communicate with you through concise summaries of each officer meeting and national officer vlogs, a plan of action through new resources and webinars featuring business leaders and a goal to unite local chapters, members, and advisors. This change is coming, FBLA, and all you have to do is vote for it. So say yes to increased communication. Say yes to further membership involvement. Members of FBLA, say yes to Vanessa. Thank you. Your candidates for national president understand that the responsibilities of this office include presiding over all national executive council meetings and promoting the goals of the association. 
as well as the interests of the membership. There are five candidates for this position. First, we will hear from Safraz Ahmed from Louisiana. Good evening, FBLA, and welcome to our National Leadership Conference. My name is Safraz Ahmed, and I'd like to serve as your national president for this upcoming year. I must say, having the chance to share my ideas with you all today is truly a rewarding and humbling experience. You see, I hail from a small town in northern Louisiana, and conferences such as these provide us with a remarkable opportunity to interact with fellow students from around the globe. As future business leaders of America, it falls upon us to ensure that our world can advance. That's why I invite everyone here to move ahead with Safraz Ahmed. In fact, I believe I possess two distinct qualities which will allow me to serve in your best interest. These two traits are experience and vision. You see, as both a past and current FBLA state officer, I've been blessed with the experience of both leading and improving my home state. But just as critically, I've been able to develop a plan which will allow us to make FBLA even more accessible for our members. Namely, we can promote communication and cooperation throughout every level of FBLA. For example, I will facilitate increased communication between our various regions through working closely with our state and national officers. We collectively benefit when the members of this organization are able to interact and learn from one another. Together, we can change the world starting today. Together, we can ensure the success of our futures. Together, we can move ahead with Safraz Ahmed. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Ryan Apigeon from Virginia. Good evening, FBLA. I'm Ryan Apigeon, and I want to be your next national president. I want to take you on a journey as you fly with Ryan. Fly with me to new heights. As captain of this flight, my leadership experience includes serving as the Virginia State Reporter and last year as the Virginia State President. I've met with Virginia's governor to help promote career and technical education throughout Virginia, and I edited and published the Virginia Newsletter. I'm a five-time national competitor, and I've attended 23 FBLA leadership conferences. I'm dedicated and passionate about this organization, and I believe in the goals of FBLA and the many opportunities it has for its members. Let me tell you about the flights we're going to take together as you fly with Ryan. On our first flight, we'll focus on membership. We'll utilize the Innovation Center for chapters to share membership recruitment ideas. Also, I want to continue to expand the FBLA middle level by encouraging partnerships between high schools and middle schools. On our connecting flight, let's communicate. We'll raise awareness of national programs through social media and the establishment of a video series in the FBLA YouTube channel. Also, I want to initiate monthly webinars for stronger communication between the national office and state officers. On our final flight, we will establish year-long connections. I want to create new scholarship opportunities sponsored by businesses for all members. Also, I want to lobby government legislators to increase career and technical education funding to help you, the member. I was first in the stage in eighth grade when I won the Financial Literacy Open event. Since then, I've been on a four-year journey to get here tonight. I would be honored to represent you on the National Officer Team and lead FBLA as the best student organization in the world. I believe in my goals, experience, and enthusiasm, we can achieve new heights in FBLA. So grab your boarding pass and vote for me, and you'll be flying with Ryan. Vote Ryan and Pitchin for National President. Thank you. We will now hear from Kyle Johnson from Florida. Good evening, FBLA. My name is Kyle Johnson, 
and I hope to be your next national president. But before I begin, I'd like to ask everyone to stand up. Take a step to your right. Thank you. You may now return to your seats. I truly believe that a good leader is able to move their peers. Not only was I able to move you today, but I helped the entirety of the 2016 National Leadership Conference to take a step in the right direction. <laughs> I'm running for national president because in addition to moving the highest achieving members of FBLA, I believe it is my responsibility to help every member of FBLA to take a step in the right direction. Three years ago, I was sitting where you are today, among the best and brightest at my first NLC. Since then, FBLA has helped me to grow from that shy freshman into the leader I am today, a four-time chapter officer, three-time district officer, Florida State reporter, and now Florida State president, where I helped to move the organization in the right direction. To move FBLA as a national officer, I would have three main priorities. First, increasing the accessibility of, FBLA, of national resources like competitive event study guides. Second, increasing the accessibility of FBLA's premier entrepreneurship program, Launchpad. And third, bridging the gap between state, local, and national levels of FBLA. Together, if you choose me, Kyle Johnson, as your next national president, I know we can truly move FBLA in the right direction. Thank you. Next is Ashley Morrill from Vermont. Leadership is not the ability to lead others. It is the ability to get others to lead themselves. Good evening, Atlanta. My name is Ashley Morrill, and I'm running to be your 2015-2016 FBLA National President. As president, I will aim high for gold. To me, gold stands for growth, organization, leadership, and development. Growth in FBLA is imperative. We cannot remain the leading student business organization without it. As president, I will aim high for growth in membership, BAA participation, and national involvement. When I think of, in, uh, when I think of organization, I think of listening, collaboration, and delegation. As president, I will set up semi-annual online meetings with state chapters and advisors in order to listen, get feedback, and share ideas. Leadership is about being a resource, not just a voice. I will be that resource for FBLA, and as national president, I will help state chapters find their own resources within their members. This will help move FBLA forward and develop a sense of community and unity. Without a sense of community, we can't go for gold. Olympic athletes str don't strive for silver or bronze medals. They covet a gold medal. Athletes like Usain Bolt and Gabby Douglas didn't just sit back and expect to win. They grew, organized themselves, led themselves, and developed into the Olympic athletes we know today. As your national FBLA president, I will help lead us to gold. Let us leave a legacy of gold. Thank you. Our final candidate is Neil Patel from Missouri. Today, connecting with other individuals is like snapping your fingers, but setting a legacy proves to be far more difficult. You must not only define your purpose, but you must achieve it from the sweat of your brow and be willing to hand it to the next generation. Helping you 
the future of this world succeed is my purpose. I completed all four levels of the Business Achievement Awards, did my 500 hours of community service for the Community Service Awards, incorporated an elevated level of international participation, and here I am standing in front of you today not only as a National President's Assistant in the Council of International Affairs, but also as your candidate for National President of FBLA. To achieve my purpose, I'd like to introduce my re-innovated national platform, which consists of the three I's. First is interact. Associate yourself with the 230,000 plus leaders that are a part of this organization, because every individual, including you all in this room, are exceptional. Second is innovate. American leaders don't test their limits, they break them and through the Ripple Project, which enhances the promotion of leadership opportunities and advanced seminars such as Launchpad, that is a concept I hope we can execute together. And third, and most importantly, is Inspire. And as Dr. Hamden L. Forkner, the founder of this organization said, leadership is not the ability to lead others, it is the ability to get others to lead themselves. I hope to show you that as future business leaders of America, you must undertake the endeavor to prepare your peers. You must implement a legacy of leadership. As national president of future business leaders of America, I, Neil Patel, want to help you succeed because you know, just as well as I, that we are the future. Good luck to all of our candidates running for office. On Friday, July 1st, beginning at 8 a.m. in the Marquis Ballroom A at the Marriott, there will be a question and answer session for the candidates for national president, secretary, and treasurer. As you connect with your fellow FBLA members, your national officer team wishes you the best of luck as you compete in your events, and we look forward to congratulating you on stage at Saturday's Awards of Excellence program. Take advantage of your time here in Atlanta and have a great National Leadership Conference. Good night. It's a little